haste, a decision that was made in a hurry. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, when He created us, He dispositioned us to be hasty, to be in a rush. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ عَجَلِ Man was created of haste. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا Man by his nature, he is hasty. Even the very finest of all creation, the prophets and the messengers, they were not completely spared of it. Imam Al-Qurtubi narrates in his tafsir on the authority of Sa'id ibn Jubayr and as suddi and others who said, he said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Prophet Adam, i.e. from clay, and he blew into him from his soul, and the soul reached his eyes, Adam, alayhi salam, he saw the fruits of Jannah. And then when the soul began to reach his torso, his upper body, he became hungry. And so before the soul would reach his legs, he tried to get up. Why? The narrator said, rushing to get to the fruits of Jannah. As for the Prophet of Allah, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, we can say something similar. This great Prophet who experienced three great stories with a great man called Al-Khadr, nicknamed Al-Khadr. They could have been more, but why weren't they anymore? Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, it's because of haste. He said, may Allah have mercy on my brother Musa. If he was a bit more patient and he wasn't hasty, he would have learned even more from Al-Khadr so that he may teach us. As for the Prophet of Allah, Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam, he left his community after giving up on them prematurely. Before Allah Almighty had given the instruction and so Allah would decree that a whale would swallow him in the middle of the ocean where he would spend the next couple of years of his life in distress. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would warn our own Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from showing similar haste by saying to him, show patience towards the command of your Lord and don't be like the man of the fish. And even our own beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was being taught the Quran through angel Jibreel, he was afraid of losing it. He was afraid of forgetting. He wanted to learn. So he would speak over the angel, repeating the Quran, not wanting to forget. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, don't be hasty with the Quran before the revelation is first completed. And just say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. The religion takes a look at haste as it does with all other things. And it may praise elements of it and condemn other elements of it. So let us divide this next section of this reminder into these two headings. Haste is ti'jal that is blameworthy and haste is ti'jal that may be praiseworthy. As for the first, is ti'jal that is blameworthy. Haste being in a hurry in a way that Allah does not like being hasty in salah. This may refer to a brother or sister who pecks his salah like a hen or a rooster, up and down, as if it's an acrobatic movement. And that is why Bukhari narrates on the authority of Abi Huraira that a man once came into the masjid and he began to pray. When he finished, he went to the Prophet ﷺ and gave salam. He responded to the greeting, then said, go and repeat your prayer. You didn't pray. So the man, he went back, he repeated his prayer. He came to the messenger ﷺ, he gave salam. Messenger said to him, go back, repeat your prayer. You didn't, you didn't pray. This happened three times. And on the third occasion, the man was just helpless. And he said, Messenger of Allah, I swear, I don't know how to pray any better than this. So can you teach me, please? So he gave him instructions. What did he say? He said, my brother, when you come to pray, say Allahu Akbar and then recite what you can from the Quran. And then he said to him, bow and stay there until your body relaxes. Then get up and stand and stay there until your body relaxes. Then prostrate and stay there till your body relaxes. Then sit up and stay there till your body relaxes. Then do this all throughout your prayer. Haste in salah is not a haste that Allah loves and it may render the salah invalid. Number two, isti'jal haste when making dua. This takes two forms. One form of rushing with dua, dear brother, dear sister, is when you make dua against yourself or against your family or against your property. And if Allah Almighty responds to your dua, it will bring about consequences that will be later regretted. And I truly believe that many of those illnesses and diseases and unexpected calamities that come our way or to our children is the direct product of a dua that we had once ignorantly made and it was misplaced due to anger or something like that. Muslim narrates on the authority of Jabir that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was traveling with his companions. One man wanted his camel to stand up. He said to it, get up, O camel, may Allah curse you. 
Get up, you lazy camel. May Allah curse you. And so the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Who was the one who just cursed his camel? The man said, It was me, O Messenger of Allah. Get down from your camel, and this camel will not join us because it has now been cursed. He said, Brothers, don't make dua against yourselves. Don't make dua against your families, your children. Don't make dua against your property. Lest your dua may coincide with a moment when Allah answers your dua. And then you will be in a state of regret. Another form of isti'jal, haste when making dua is when you say, Ya Rabb, I've made so much dua, where is the answer? And then dua will not be answered. Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will continue answering your dua, giving you everything you want. As long as you are not hasty by saying, I have made so much dua, but I don't see a response. Take this number three, haste when wanting to secure income. This get rich quick culture is killing us, dear brother, dear sister. So shaitan comes to us and he turns our attention away from the doors of halal that are wide, mashallah, and open, mashallah. And he turns our eyes and places blinkers on our heads so that we see nothing but the dark and narrow small doors of the haram and convinces us this is what will bring you comfort. This is what will bring you success. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in one of the most profound hadith in this department, he said, Angel Jibreel has blown into my soul revelation saying to me that Allah has said no human being shall die until he has first consumed his entire lifespan that Allah has written for him and consumed his rizq, his provisions that Allah has written for him. He said, therefore, fear Allah and seek your money, your rizq, your provisions in a beautiful way. And do not allow the delay in receiving your rizq, your provisions, cause you to look for it in the haram. Because that which is with Allah can only be attained through his obedience. May Allah Almighty allow us to purify our businesses. Another example, haste when wanting to see change in a person whom you have been advising to become better. Or haste when wanting to see change at the level of the ummah. And we hear some people saying, there's no hope. What is the point? I've tried so hard with him, with her. I've invited them to the masjid, gifted them with books, sent them YouTube lectures. What is the point? Where are we going as Muslims? What is the point of electing, somebody may say, when the results are not favorable as we saw? What do we do? No hope. There's no point. And I never forget the words that were given to Khabbab ibn al-Arati. And you know Khabbab, a man who suffered so much at the hands of the pagans, there were holes in his back. You'd think he'd been shot by a machine gun if you saw his back because of how much he'd suffered at their hands for being a Muslim. He came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Shakawna. He said, we went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whilst he was leaning under the shade of the Kaaba, using his cloak as a pillow, nothing, basics. We said, will you not make dua for us? Will you not ask Allah to give us support against them? Can't you see what we're going through? What did he say? He said, in the past, there used to be people who would suffer. They would bring a person and dig for him a hole in the earth and then place him inside. What next? And then they would bring a saw, place it in the middle of his head and cut him from top to bottom until he falls into two pieces. What else? And others, they would have iron combs used to remove their muscle and their fat from their body. And none of this would push them away from their religion. And then he said, I swear by Allah, Allah is going to complete this religion until you see a man being able to travel from Sana'a, city in Yemen, to Hadramaut, another city in Yemen, fearing nobody but Allah, meaning the whole path, the whole area will be for the Muslims. And maybe he will fear the wolf for his sheep. But you are a people who are Russian. Be patient with your wife, your husband, your daughter, your son, your neighbor, the da'wah, the ummah. Be patient. These are four examples of haste isti'jal. That is blameworthy. But we said the religion is balanced. So do we have examples of haste isti'jal that is praiseworthy? Example number one of isti'jal, haste that Allah loves. Rushing to do good deeds. You hear of an opportunity to do good. Don't wait another second. Rush to it. And according to the book of Allah, the greater the objective, the greater the acceleration should be. So when Allah talks about dunya, the life of this world, Allah said, Famshu, walk. But when Allah speaks about salah, a much higher, Allah says, Fas out, rush to it. But when Allah speaks about Jannah, He uses the terms Fastabiku, Sari'u, Sabiku, race, compete, rush. But when Allah speaks about going to Himself, He says, Fafirru, flee to Him. Another example, Hajj. If you have the means, Ya Akhi, to go to to Morocco, to go to Cyprus, 
to go to Dubai, to go to Malaysia for whatever purpose, then you have the means to do your Hajj. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say in the hadith of Ibn Majah, whoever intends to do Hajj, rush and do it because you may fall ill or you may lose your ride or there may be a need of yours that becomes pressing. Look at the agencies providing Hajj and don't delay. Akhil Karim, if you have not done your Hajj already, that's a second example of haste Allah loves. Third, giving back people their rights. What do you owe? Think about it, squeeze your memory. Is it something material you owe, like money or debt, a wage? Or is it something immaterial that you owe, like an apology? Don't delay for another moment. Rush to that person, say, I am sorry, here is your hat. Maybe one more, we will conclude with this. Istijal haste that Allah loves so much is to rush and offer an apology to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haste in repenting to him. I will change when I come back from hell. Or I will change when I find work, inshallah. Or I will stop communicating in the haram or watching the haram or observing the haram, inshallah, when I get married. Or I will focus my life for the akhirah, the hereafter, when I retire, inshallah. Giving Allah the loose change of our time and the loose change of our money. And a person who delays his astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. A person who delays this is like a person who sees a tree in an awkward place and so he wants to remove it. He, he tries to remove it, but he sees that the tree is firm, stuck in its place. He says, no problem, I will come back after a year and I will remove it. He comes back after a year and the tree is only stiff in its place. Likewise, our habits, they're only solidifying. Life is only getting shorter. Allah says, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Allah will forgive these people. لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَ Those who commit sins because of ignorance. ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ then they repent soon after. Haste. These are the people Allah will forgive. And Allah is knowing and wise. Then Allah said, But Allah will not accept the repentance of those people who commit sins. And they delay all the way until death arrives. And then he says, Allah, I, for, I repent now. Nor will Allah forgive those who die without Iman. These people we have prepared for them a severe punishment, Allah says.